Okay, so we covered the basics of doing a platformer style 2D experience where, right, you can, we've got player motion down, we've talked a little bit about physics and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing a top down style game. So I'm going to go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a new scene. So I'm going to save what I've been working on. I'm going to say file new scene. And you'll see that I can now use this basic 2D built in. Right. So we're going to say, OK, let's go ahead and. Actually. I'm not 100% sure if this will work with the URP or not, but let's go ahead and I'm just going to create it and we'll see. Because this is really mainly mainly about getting that motion down. It doesn't really matter if we can work with that render or not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so I have a little bit more space. So, right, this is, again, the, right, the camera, the view, the visible screen. Let's go ahead and we're just going to pull in, you know, we're going to pull in our player again make them a little bit smaller. Maybe hold down shift. I mean, if you want them to be, you know, out of proportion, go for it. And then let's go ahead and pull a couple of these checker whoa, checkerboards in. I totally forgot um, how huge that is. I'm going to undo that. I have this, um, right, I created this prefab here that's actually, right, already got the box collider attached to it. Um, and I believe, right, is the right size. So, that's something that you can do, right? If you pull this monster in here, you can always like add a couple things to it, make it a prefab, scale it correctly, so then you can use it, um, right? Reuse it pretty easily in other projects, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to create a few of these um, and just copy and paste so that I can, you know, we're just going to have a couple of these objects floating around the scene. Okay. Now with this. Right. If I select all of these, they've got colliders, but they do not have rigid bodies attached. Right. And so we're going to leave them um, as just objects with colliders uh, temporarily. And the big question is going to be Bob's motion and how we're going to do that. Now let's go ahead and add a couple components. So first we're going to go ahead and add a collider to Bob and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this as a, I'm going to go ahead and do a capsule collider. And then I'm also going to go over here and I'm going to add a rigid body object. And wherever that is, there it is, rigid body 2D. Okay. Right. But now if I do this and I play this, Bob's going to fall down, whereas I want it to be as though this is the floor that Bob is walking on. OK, so we've added a, a capsule collider. We've added a rigid body 2D. And obviously we're going to need a flow graph in order to make Bob move. So the question is, what does that flow graph look like? And can we reuse anything that we've done already? The answer is yes, we can reuse something that we've done already. So let's go ahead and go to Bolt flow machine, and I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to start by going to, you'll see I've, I've already got one here, but I'm going to go to my 2D character motion script that I wrote. And what I want to be able to, what I want to reuse is specifically the, this section of the horizontal motion, right? I don't want to be resetting my Y value to whatever the velocity is and have gravity potentially apply to that. Um, I want to be able to use, set that with my X or with my um, W, A, S, or D keys. So um, I don't need, and I'm not going to need any jump functionality. Um, you know, maybe I'd want to crouch or a roll or something like that, but that's, you know, another, you know, which would be similar to programming this. You just have to determine, you know, what, what that means. Um, and, how that action looks when you when you execute it. But so this is the part that I want to borrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of those units that are there. I'm going to go I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to go to this 
dot over here where my macro is selected, I'm gonna to go to none. And then once I've set that, I'm gonna click new and right, I'll name this whatever, um, you know, I'm gonna say 2D and I'm just gonna call it top motion because I already have the other one. Um, and I will save this in my scripts folder. And then I'm gonna select these two objects, right click, delete selection, and then I'm just gonna paste in what I had previously. Now there's gonna be some issues here because first, um, this speed variable does not exist. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna need to recreate that. So I'm gonna go over to my object variables here on my object, or I can come up here and go to object variables, and I'm just gonna type in speed, hit the plus sign, and um, add, make it a float, and set the value to 100, because that's what we had previously. Okay, so I've done that. So let's go ahead and run this and just see if we at least have horizontal motion and see if there's any issues that are coming up right now. And the update's working, but it's coming in here and then I'm not even getting any values out. So let's go ahead and see what the heck is going on. Oh, so when I <laughs> deleted, when I only selected these objects, there's a reason things are not working. Okay, so I set the speed variable, but you'll note that half of this graph is grayed out. And that's because, right, when I set this up earlier, the, right, there were other objects that were, there were other units that were in between here and here. So I need to reconnect this flow. There we go. So now this should work. Okay, so... All right, so I've got side-to-side -side motion with Bob. Okay, so now this should work. Oh, and I do have side-to-side -side motion, but Bob is also slowly falling into infinity like he was before. Right? And you'll note that I have my, my Y is being set to zero here, which is what was happening before. Gravity is still impacting him. So how do we stop gravity from messing with Bob? There's a couple ways we could do that. If we know we want no gravity in the entire, um, in the entire game, then what we can do is we can go over to Edit and go down to Project Settings, go to Physics 2D, and where our value here in the y direction is nine, negative 9.18, we can just set that to zero. And if we set that value here, Bob should stay put. Um, and hopefully we can see that, right? So yeah, so now I can move side to side and there's no gravity, right? And if, if you're doing a top-down thing and you don't want gravity to be something that impacts anything, this is a you know, a good way to go about that. If you want to use it as like a passive force to send enemy units toward you or something, you might want to leave that on. There's another way to, to determine whether gravity has an impact on a object by object basis. So I'm going to go back um, and reset this value uh, globally. So it'll be negative 9.81 in the Y. Um, I don't need to do any of those things. Okay. So, um, so I have, I've turned gravity back on again. The way you turn it off on an individual object or adjust how it affects an object is with this gravity scale option. So if I set my gravity to one, that means it's going to fall at the normal rate of gravity in, for that master value. If I set this to zero, that means it's gonna be unaffected by that value. If I set it to, you know, somewhere between zero and one, it's going to be, you know, you can essentially simulate like a feather or something, you know, you without adjusting your drag and things like that, you could do it with just your gravity scale. You could also um, make things float up. You could invert gravity for certain objects. There's, there's lots of ways you could work with that. But if I just set this to zero here, I'm going to get the same effect on Bob. He's going to move left and right, but he's not going to, you know, be, uh, you know, be a slave to gravity. Right, so he can slide back and forth across the screen, but he is not dropping 
down. Okay, so how do I add the vertical motion? The vertical motion is really pretty simple. So all I need to do is say, okay, well, I need, I know I want all of this to be the same, except, you know, applied to the, the Y axis. And so I can feed it into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these units right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy, I'm gonna paste, I'm gonna pull this down, and then I'm gonna run my flow through this second axis and then up back through here. And instead of horizontal as the axis name, I'm gonna make that vertical. If you misspell it, it is not gonna work as it did when I was demoing, trying to work out this demo. Um, and then I'm going to, to connect this multiply um, output oops, into the Y input for my vector two. Okay, so now I should have my horizontal and vertical motion. So let's go ahead and write speed. I'm using speed twice because it's gonna basically be, right, I don't want it to move. Maybe there's a point where I'd want it to move faster in a forward direction than the sideways direction. But right now we are just moving, we'll be moving freely in this 2D space. Now there are plenty of 2D top-down games where your, um, where your motion is restricted, right? You can either essentially move tile by tile, right? You can either move left one or up one or down one, right? In this one, you can move at diagonals. Um, this is like the most free way to do motion. If you're wanting to do, you know, a more tile by tile or, you know, one step by one step motion, that's going to be a little bit more complex to, to program. Okay, but this is how you do motion in 2D as like a top-down style game. Now, the other thing is we can take the script that we wrote for our camera in the other thing and redo it here so that we can also have the camera follow our character in this top-down world. So to do that, let's go ahead and um, select our camera. And I believe I did that as an embed so that I could grab this. So we can pretty quickly just add a component, come in here, flow machine, uh, make this an embed again, and get rid of our start event, and try and remember all the steps that we did earlier, or we could have, we could go to the other scene, grab the embed, copy and paste it. But right, the main thing is we want to be able to take, um, to get Bob's um, transform position. Right, so we want to get Bob's transform, so we want to say, Bobby, we want, we want to know where you are, in the world, and we want to specifically pull out the x and y values. So I'm just going to say get and vector three get x, and then vector three get y, and there's the y. Right, and remember, <laughs> and then we're going to want to go to add unit, and we're going to say we'll do a new vector three x y z. We're gonna set our Z to negative 10, not positive 10 this time. And we're gonna run the flow through here, and then we will take the X, put it in the X, the Y, put it in the Y. And then this new vector three, we're going to send on to set the transform of our camera. So we're gonna say transform.position and set, and we will connect our vector three from here to here, and we will connect our flow and then we should have a camera follow, right? Now, obviously I'm doing these as embeds. It might be wiser <laughs> to do this as a, something that's not embedded. Okay, and so now here you go, right? Bob's moving around this space. Now, right, it really depends on, you know, are you doing something where you have a large space that you're exploring in this top-down view? Um, or, you know, you might not want to have the camera linked to the player if, the room is basically the bounds of the screen and your character is roaming around in there. But if it's a much larger um, you know, experience, this would be kind of the way to go about, one way to go about doing it. Okay, and that is the end of this tutorial on how to do uh, top-down motion.